We continue with what we started last Sunday, hopefully to finish today. First Thessalonians chapter 4, we are looking at the believer's practice, guarding the anointing. First Thessalonians chapter 4, we went through chapter 4, we went through a bit of the um, background of the book of Thessalonians, which we'll not go into today. If you haven't caught up with that, if you aren't here last Sunday, you can go to our YouTube channel, Deliverance Church Zimmerman, and you'll find it right there. We pick it up from where we left, uh, guarding the anointing, verse 8 of First Thessalonians chapter 4. It says, therefore, he who rejects these teachings does not reject man but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. That is the anointing we are guarding. That everyone that is born again, everyone that has received Jesus Christ, everyone has been released to or has been gifted the Holy Spirit. That is what we are guarding. Maybe you are wondering, what is guarding the anointing? What anointing are we guarding? We have been anointed with the Holy Spirit. As, um, since the day you give your life to Jesus Christ, that is the mark, that one that has sealed you for the day of redemption, the Holy Spirit. That is what we are guarding today. He says concerning brotherly love, you have, I have no need, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves are taught by God to love one another, verse 10, and indeed you do so towards all the brethren who are in Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more. The case he's making is that just in case you are already practicing the things he's talking about, do not stop to do them. Do not say, this is not for me. This is for the others who are not doing. He's saying, if you are doing good, abound more and more. If these things are yours and abound, they will keep you from falling. They will keep you preserved. They will keep you. You get better and better. So do not stop if you're doing good. Do not keep yourself from hearing the good news. Keep yourself more and more. Go into the place of fellowship. Give yourself over to accountability. Continue to do those things. Do not stop. Somebody said that whatever you did to get a thing, you must keep doing to keep that thing. Guarding the anointing is an everyday thing. It is an everyday assignment. I do not guard the anointing today and that's it. The day I receive the Holy Spirit, I don't do it for a week. I don't just guard it and be careful about what I'm doing or where I'm, what I'm saying or where I'm going. I don't just do that one day and then I'm done. No, I do it until the day I hear the trumpet sounds and I go into eternity with Jesus Christ. There are no off days in guarding the anointing. Pastor Ali said to us that a part-time believer cannot defeat a full-time devil. This week I was sharing with my encounter sons from the book of Ephesians chapter 6. From verse 10 it starts to say, um, um, uh, it, it talks about the full armor of God. And it says, finally brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Take upon yourself the full armor of God faith or the full armor of God so that you may be able to withstand all the wiles of the enemy, all the strategies of the enemy. Because we do not battle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. He says again, therefore, put on the full armor of God a second time so that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all things to stand. If you read this in the message paraphrase, it says this is no simple afternoon court, uh, Athlete, athletic contest that we will be over and done with and forget about in a short time. No, this is for keeps. This is life and death. It is a battle between the devil and all his angels. He says, therefore, take all the help you can get. It says you are, far, you are up against far much more than you can handle by yourself. Therefore, take all all the help you can get. You must give yourself to being full time. You must give yourself to guarding the anointing day in and day out. Now, many times we might think that guarding the anointing requires those things we call spiritual, that it is praying in tongues and making sure that you do not forget the language of the spirit. It is going around just, you know, praying and just doing things. Those are good things. But the things that Paul is writing to the church at Thessalonica about are the things that we are also doing to guard the anointing. Everyday, ordinary things. The way you eat, the way you sleep, the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you work, your work ethic, those things guarding the anointing. 
He says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, in the message paraphrase, he says, therefore, here is what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life and place it before God as an offering. He describes your everyday, ordinary life as you're eating, you're sleeping, you're walking around, that, you're going to work, that, and place it before God as an offering. Your everyday, ordinary life, that is how you guard the anointing. Tell your neighbor, guard the anointing. Guarding the anointing is a thing that we do in our conscious and when the Lord helps us, it seeps into us so that even in our subconscious, we are guarding the anointing. You are careful about the way you respond. If somebody were to step on your white shoes in this muddy season, the way you respond to them, that is guarding the anointing because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. We cannot just read a few Bible verses when we are coming to Bible study on Friday or when you are coming to service on Sunday and then as that those will help us to guard the anointing it won't work it is the same doing that is the same as trying to fatten a cow on the market day you know it will just be bloated it will not be healthy if you try to just feed yourself with things on the day of on specific days when you're meeting specific people or when you're coming to the Lord in specific seasons that won't work it must be our everyday ordinary life when you go to the encounter one of the questions that we read you're going through the sin profile is just to ask do you read the bible do you give do you read the bible just what you can not the way you ought do you pray just the way you can just that just the, what you can manage not the way you ought to pray the bible says we should pray at all times without ceasing luke chapter 18 verse 1 jesus speaks to them his disciples teaching them a lesson he says then jesus taught them this parable to teach them that men ought to pray all times and never faint or never give up at all times the bible calls us in first thessalonians is it chapter 5 and 17 or 18 it talks about us praying at all times it says pray without ceasing first thessalonians Thessalonians 5 and 17. You ought to throw yourself into that place of every single time doing the work of guarding the anointing. Tell your neighbor, guard the anointing. So he says, abound all the more in these things. Do these things. You ought to do them. You ought to do them every day. Don't say, I have done enough. Don't say, I have surrounded myself with godly company. You remember we did the season on the... Um, Blessed is the man, you remember that, when we're going through Psalm chapter 1, and we said surround yourself with some Psalm, born again Psalm 1s. You need to surround yourself with people who are believers. If your, if your speech is going to change, if your conversation is going to change, if your thoughts are going to change, you must surround yourself with people who are calling on the Lord, the same as you. That's what the Bible calls us to do in, is it fast, um, it's, um, where Paul is calling us to pursue purity. First Timothy? Is it? So Paul is calling Timothy and he's saying, um, you must flee from um, youthful lusts and passions. And you must run towards righteousness. And you must run together with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. You can't say, I've surrounded myself with godly people. Enough. No. Continue to seek out for godly fellowship. That's why the family of God is not closed. It is not localized. The family of God is everywhere. That everywhere you go, you seek out believers. You seek out to be their friends. You seek out to try and understand. You might not like them naturally, but they are believers. So we push ourselves to like fellow believers. Because at least these are people who believe the same things as us. In this crooked and perverse day and age, beloved, you need some born again people. You need some born again people. You need some born-again people. People who can give you that counsel. People who, when you just sit, when you're just being yourselves, can look at you and tell you, yeah, like in your kidogo, mm -mm. born again someone's abound more and more. Tell your neighbor, guard the anointing. So he continues to say, abound more and more, that you also aspire to lead a quiet life. And that's what we looked at um, last week at length, aspire to lead a quiet life. And where we stopped it, we said a quiet life is a quality life. When you're thinking about Paul calling us to aspire to lead a quiet life, you must remember those things we talked about, about keeping yourself away from the noise, that it cannot be that the first voice you hear in the morning is the voice of the world, and the last voice you hear before you go to bed is the voice of the world. It cannot be the testimony of a person that is guarding the anointing. 
You must give yourself to the person who gave you the anointing in the first place. Receive instructions. What do I do? Because the Holy Spirit is empowerment, divine enablement to do the things or the assignment that God has called you to do. Therefore, you must every day report to be on duty. I am available. This is what I have done today. You go back into your day and ask yourself, where have I been today? What have I done? Did I guard the anointing? Did my words guard the anointing? Did my actions guard the anointing? If I were to be silent, would people know by the way I behaved today? When food was being served, when I passed through there with my plate, did I consider the people behind the queue? Or was I just out for my own satisfaction and my plate was piled to the full and the vegetables were hanging like curtains on the plate and I was balancing the soup with my soda here and my water here and I was going, I'm not thinking that all these people have come for this same food that I am eating. Did I consider other people guarding the anointing? That when people look at me, they are not thinking this person is a gluttonous pastor. Am I the person that is scrambling for people at the Matatu in town? I know it is raining and I am tired. I want to get home. But it is raining not just on me. It is raining on everybody else. Is it, isn't it more respectable to just make another organized tupange tu laini? Okifikiwa ni sawa. At least ni najua zikienda. The next itakuja ni yangu. Guarding. Lakini una sukuma, una elbow wa mama, una angusha vijana, una ingia hapo, una keti kwa kiti. Ndiyo fike nyumbani. Ndiyo ni fike sell. Two wrongs don't make a right. Just because you're going to the place of worship does not qualify you hitting other people and looking at other people's side, dying everybody. It doesn't qualify. It doesn't just, you came to service. Brethren, I want to bless the Lord. He has made a way for me to be here today against all odds. No, 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 no. The people that you left out there, if they came to a fellowship, maybe they moved into the neighborhood and another neighbor invited them to come to your cell. When they finally arrive and they see you are the person that is leading the cell, hallelujah, let's all stand. You are too busy elbowing them. Don't ongoza. I got to like, oh, thank you, sorry, something just came up. And Aondoka, we lose a soul into the kingdom because of you. It has nothing to do with praying in that moment. It has everything to do with the way you are guarding. Tell your neighbor, guard the anointing. When you aspire to lead a quiet life, you are spoken to every day by the voice that has actually anointed you. The voice of God. A quality life. You ask yourself, why do I do the things that I do? Some of us are excelling in our places of work, but not for the glory of God. We are excelling so that you can have something to say at your family gatherings or at your high school reunions when you go back. Some people can look at you. Everybody is just asking you, hey, kuna and I you look like God. That in your heart, nobody will ever know it, but you, you know, in your heart, your sole motivation for excelling is not the glory of God. It's not for kingdom expansion. It's not that others might see you and desire the victorious God of your salvation. No, it is so that you can feel good and get that paper and stack that bread and get the money and then everybody, you become the envy of everybody. Village champion. So that every card can be sent to you when they are building churches in the village. Why do you do the things you do? When you lead a quiet life, you actually pause and God can actually ask those questions in the quietness. A story that I will not get into because of time is found in the book of Genesis chapter 11 from verse 4 to 8. I shared this with the media team when we were out for a retreat. This story is about the Tower of Babel. When the Tower of Babel is being constructed, these men said, let us make a tower reaching into the heavens. Why? So that we can make a name for ourselves, so that we cannot be forgotten, so that we can stay together. It says, let us make a name for ourselves. We build a city whose top is in the heavens, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. By the time we are scattered, we will have created something. The people will say, those people of Babel, no people like them. The way they build, their towers, their skyscrapers, nothing has been seen like that. 
When the next verse, please move to the next verse. The next verse, the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. They caught the attention of God. What did God say in the very next verse? It says, and the Lord says, indeed, the people are one and they, are one, they have one language. And this is what they begin to do. What does God say? Let's say together now. Now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. God himself is saying, these people are one, one language, one nation. They have purpose to do this thing. Nothing they propose to do will be withheld from them. Let's go to the next verse. It says, the Lord himself is speaking. Come, let us go down and confuse their language that they may not understand one another's speech. And the very next verse. It says, so the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they ceased building the city. You might ask yourself, did God not want people to develop? Did not God wa not want people to build and to become great? That's not it. It's not that that was the issue. The issue or the case was simply this, beloved, that their motive in their heart was not for the glory of God. It was not centered in God. The city was not for the glory of God. It was not for the fame of God. It was let us make a name for ourselves. When you sit to ask yourself, beloved, why do you do the things that you do as you're leading a quiet life? You might find that a lot of the reason why some of our projects are not working, why some of our endeavors are not moving to the next level, might it be because we are not doing it to the glory of God. So God is coming and saying, this person, the way they have, vinya mejituma, nasemanga tujitume, vinya mejituma mungu anasema uko benguni, uyu, akuna kitu anaeza amua kufanya ikose kutokelezea. Kwa hivyo wacha ni shuke, mimi mwenyewe, niende ni andui kitu. Kwa sababu ikitokelezea, apate ile matunda anataka, itamaliza ye mwenyewe. Could this be that the reason why the things we are endeavoring to do in our young age is not, to, uh, those things are not working? Could it be that it is for the reason that our heart or the motive of our heart is not right? As you lead a quiet life, the Lord reveals those things to you. That is how you guard the anointing. As you lead a quiet life, the Lord shows you that this thing you're setting out to do, has, it doesn't have me. But now on the flip side, imagine, what about if the motive of my heart is right? God himself comes and sees, if this person excels in this thing, my name will be glorified. Souls will be won into the kingdom. There will be kingdom fame. The enemy will be put to shame. People will look at him and see, this is that one who believes in God. This is that one who acknowledges the Lord in all that he does. Ah, if that is what the Lord says, he said, let this thing be blessed. Imagine if that were it. Tell your neighbor, aspire to lead a quiet life. In the next line, he says, aspire to mind your own business. As he's talking about minding their own business, you ask yourself, what does that mean? It doesn't mean that we shouldn't focus and think about other people. But it calls us first to shine the light on us. In school, they used to tell us, when you point somebody like this, all the other fingers are pointing back. Mind your own business. He says, make it your own aspiration to mind your own business. Imagine that is scripture. To mind your own business. That you're not so concerned with other people. Look at the way that one is dressed. Look at the way. Could it be that the way they are dressed might not be right, but it is because they don't know. But you who knows, maybe you are, your dressing is right, but again, for the wrong reasons. Mind your own business. So that's what Jesus calls us to do. He says, do not look at the speck in the other person's eye and you cannot see the log in your own eye. So that we leave that business of spreading other people's business abroad and talking about what other people have done and what other people do not do. So that we shine the light back on us. When you lead that life of minding your own business, you say how Pastor Alice says it. When you see somebody who is doing something wrong, you say, there goes myself, but for the grace of God. If God could cause me and keep me from being there, then he can also keep them from being there and bring them to a different place. Minding your own business. That is the life that God is calling the believer to do. That's how you guard the anointing. Unajua za kwako, unawachana na za wenye? Unakondeshwa na yako. That is That is it. That is how you guard the anointing. Together with all the other things that we desire to do. May the Lord help us. You see, I don't think any one of us is there yet. That's why Paul says, aspire. 
tamani. Make it your life's mission. So if you're here and your life is not minding your own business, there's no condemnation. God is just calling you to change it around today. Make it your ambition, your aspiration to mind your own business. So that when I come to church, I am not thinking about anybody else. I am thinking about me and God. I must have my encounter. I must meet with God. God must touch me today. If only I can touch today the hem of his garment, minding your own business. I don't want to imagine that woman was thinking about other people when she was inching closer and closer to Jesus. I don't want to imagine she was thinking, but there, there's another woman who bleeds more than me. Why is she not coming? I don't want to imagine that's what she was thinking. It might be that the others were bleeding, even others had died, and she was wondering why they have not gone. But that was not her business. She was minding her own. You see, that is the one characteristic with everybody that Jesus healed in the Bible. They minded their own business. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Blind Bartimaeus is just there crying out. The other people, none minders of their own business, just like, shut up, shut up. You're embarrassing us in this city. Jesus is passing by embarrassment. You should not know. Just shh, shh. He's going to send his disciples. He's just shh, shh. But there is one blind Bartimaeus. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Could it be that the reason we are not concerned with waking up and calling out in the name of Jesus Christ is that we are not minding. Because when you mind your business, you actually realize how terribly filthy you are. When you mind your business, you remember how weak you are. You shine the light into yourself first. When you're reading the Bible, you're reading the Bible for you. I'm not reading the Bible and thinking, mm, so this is how the youth are living in this church, is it not so? Mm. That's not it, beloved. When I'm reading the Bible, I'm reading it for me. This word is a light. The De David, the, the psalmist says, your word is a lamp to my, and a light to my path, not to your path. Could it, be, could it be that I am not minding my business enough? That's why I'm stumbling in the darkness, because I don't even realize I'm walking in darkness. Have you ever been seated in a room? That happened to us on Friday. We were somewhere in Thika, and we were seated having lunch, and we were in just a room. It was daylight. The room has windows, but it was slightly dark, but you know, none of us were minding it. We were seated right there, and then we were eating with other people, and then Pastor Kibera walked into the room with his food, and then he looked around, and he found a socket, and he turned on the light. And everybody was like, ah. And then we continued to eat. It's not like we were dying from the darkness, but the conditions could have been better. And when he came in, he put on the lights. Have you ever been seated in darkness and you don't even know you're in darkness until somebody points it out? It's like when we came to church this morning, I'm sure a lot of us did not even know that we have been removing our hands from the hand of God until God pointed it out today in worship. And then you're like, ah. You see, that's a beautiful thing about minding your own business. Because you are here, nimejileta mwenyewe. Mimi mwenyewe. Nimejileta tu mimi. In the old days, they used to say a song, Mimi ni mwenye dhambi hata mukiniona. And when they used to sing in those, um, uh, those I don't know what they are called, Kwa hiyo nini? Unajipiga, unasema, nimekosa mimi, nimekosa mimi, nimekosa sana. Sikuji ni kikwambia, umekosa wewe, na umekosa wewe, na wewe umekosa sana kwanza. No, mimi nimekosa mimi, nimekosa mimi, nimekosa. So that I'm not, when I am praying, I'm not thinking about the other people. No, I am, I am so I am so distraught at this thing that I have done. I am like, God, please remember mercy on me. God, please see my heart. God, save me. What is wrong with my heart? And you are so vexed. What Bishop Mark calls holy anger. Ukona tu holy anger uko ndani yako. Si kwa wengine. Wewe kiangalia. Nani hao waombi uko nyuma? Mbona waombi kanisa hii ya Mimi ndio makanisa yanaanguka. No, 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 no. Mimi ninaomba Tell your neighbor, aspire, aspire. To, mind to mind your own business. Your own business. That is how we guard the anointing, beloved.
Because if you minded your business, and you minded your business, and I minded my business, then the church has minded its business. Because when you mind your business, you call on the Lord. And then I mind my business and call on the Lord. When the Lord comes, when we are all gathered, he's coming to answer you, he's coming to answer you, he's coming to answer. We all have an encounter. Bwana sifiwe. Guard the anointing. Bwana yesu sifiwe. Now, just one thing that we might need to be cautious about when we are minding our own business. That does not mean that we forget the place of fellowship or we neglect the place of fellowship. Not at all, beloved. God is not calling us. Now, I'm minding my business so much. So, but somebody comes and tells you, Gloria, I'd like to just pray with me. I'm going through something. I'm like, hey, me, me, Staki Mambo Yawatu. Squeeze is Staki, Staki Mambo Nyingi. That's not it. And as you seek the Lord, as you're leading a quiet life, the Lord is able to help you to know what is minding your business quite clearly. See, that's the beauty about the word of God. You read the word and somebody said to us, the only book that you will ever read, that every time as you're reading it, the author is present, is the Bible. As I am reading it, he can actually come and tell me this is what I meant. When you're reading a book that I have written, the way I use many phrases and many terms, you might not even understand some of those things. Have you seen those people on TikTok who try to, these wazungus, they are doing at some TEDx, and they are saying, you know, in Kenya, when somebody says Habari Yako, what they actually mean is they are saying the ocean is yours. It's like, that's Bahari, bro. But aliona tuime andi kwa maali akua na jua. A lot could get lost in that translation. That's why the Lord has allowed you to fit this thing into your own hands. Ame kupatia kila mtu wa kuena yake. Uji some. Ndo usiende kule kwa nini? Mashaka. Una, u, 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 kienda usitiwe mashakani. Msha kuta. Jisome. Try, try to seek out. When we started the youth Bible study a couple of years ago, some of the leaders are here who started with us at that time. One of the very clear instructions or end games that the Lord gave to us when we were starting the YBS was that every man might be able to stand alone. That you can actually read the word and be able to stand without requiring the pastor to shikilia you. Without requiring the leader to shikil. That I can stand as a believer. And then the other believer comes and we close ranks. And then we march forward and overcome the enemy. Push back the darkness in this day and age. I hope that when you're, not, when you're not coming to the youth Bible study, you are somewhere else, you also study the Bible. Maybe not in that time, but I pray. I pray that you're in a place where you study the Bible. I, I really hope so. Because this, has be, this outfit has been made available. I know some of you are working in that time, some of you are in school, some of you are commuting, some of you are actually standing in line in the matatus, not elbowing people. Good for you. Please do that. But for those of you who are, you can just be in. I love Sasa. No, nini sasa? After, like. Joey Zilala forever. <laughs> Yesterday I was telling somebody how I've not been sleeping um, because I've been busy. And I told them, but my off day is coming. On Tuesday, I will sleep that sleep until it sleeps. I can remember, um, I hate to break it to you. That's not how it works. You've already lost that sleep. Like, you'll never recover it. Like that part of your brain is already damaged. That's like scattered by fire. Damaged. <laughs> anyway, I just pray that the Lord will help you and me to not just sit in the place of... Because it's very easy. The enemy can use this and just help keep us in a place where now we are not concerned about other believers or where we neglect. I, I twist to... Someone who has a mind their own business. to simply give you feel the prompting of the spirit to call your brother to call your brother or your sister. Just ask them, Pastor Paul, how are you doing? But then I'm thinking, I'm a, I'm a in my business. I'm only at it too. Call that brother. How many of you have been called by somebody when you needed it the most and you didn't even have the grace to pick up your phone and just say, please, bro? So God, God has to do the work for you. Me, that has happened to me many times. And I'm just in a place, and then I just receive a phone call. And of course, in that moment, I'm thinking, I don't want to talk to anybody. Then I'm just like, anyway, true story, bro. So, 
Uh, she can see me too. Hello. And then Wanjala is like, hey, bro, how are you doing? I'm like, I'm going to fit in. Ah, I'm going to fit in. 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 This is something there. This is something. This is something. Like in people see, oh, okay, what I'm saying to you. Just, <laughs> just, just follow, follow as, as the Spirit prompts you. You see, the beauty about spending time with God is that you actually get to know. The Bible says, my sheep, they hear my voice. The more you hear my voice, the more you know my voice. I'm just walking. I went to a boarding primary school. And that school was, you know, it was, it was a bit, the rules were very military. So you had to be allowed, parents were not allowed to just visit, to just pop in, yeah? But if a parent popped in, they had to go to the staff room and ask for permission. Okay, I understand rules and regulation. But if I was just walking around the pavement and then I saw my parent coming in, I wasn't supposed to talk to her until she goes to the office. I'm like, I have known this one longer than I've known you guys. Why? <laughs> but anyway, that was the rule. So this one time, I'm just walking around primary school. I think I was in class seven. I'm walking around, uh, just, you know, suffering. Um, <laughs> and uh, I was just somewhere in Aukwa too. And then as I'm just behind the corridors, I hear a voice. I'm just like, that voice is, nah -uh. that voice, I'm just going around the corner. I'm like, I knew it. I know that voice. Been hearing it since I was in the womb. It's, it's my mom. So you have to hang around the corridors just like. <laughs> Keep yourself busy. <laughs> uh, somebody go and look for Moshigadi. <laughs> it's like, oh, I was jogging. Oh, hi, mom. <laughs> the more you hear the voice, the more you. Come on, the more you hear the voice, the more you know the voice. You get accustomed to it. So spend time with the voice. Sit with the voice. Long enough for the voice to actually... You know the voice when it is correcting you. You know the voice when it is encouraging you. You know the voice. So that you only think... You don't only think that the voice is just to tell you, well done, well done, well done. You're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed. You also know when the voice is telling you, watch ayo mchezo konayo. Sit with the voice. Tell your neighbor, sit with the voice. All right. Aspire to mind your own business. And finally, tell your neighbor, aspire to work with your own hands. Oh, turn to another one. Tell them, aspire to work with your own hands. That was close to my heart. Aspire to work with your own hands, beloved. Aspire to work with your own hands. That one preaches for itself. Aspire to work with your own hands. It is calling us away. That is a way of guarding the anointing. It is calling us away from just sitting down and waiting for it to drop. Which is a challenge in our generation. You and I know that. And all of us are guilty in one way or the other. I just sit down and just sit in. Yesterday I had a conversation with somebody who at a wedding. And I had a really, really, really interesting conversation. And we're just talking about how um, it is lost in our generation. When, you, when our parents visit somebody, they have to go with something. Sindio. So, and we have said this again in the youth service many times before. Ah, 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 and here's something that me and Pastor Joy like to practice every time we're talking about it when we're visiting people. At least carry what you will eat. Beba kenyu na penanga kukula. Of course, the question in your head is, Jenny kipele kakeki ya lafu sasa ayeke uko kwa storage alafu anilete endoma. Nisawa utakume bariki mtu si lazima kila wakati ukula. Na imagine, umeleta pizza ndiyo mkule. Kule like, wow, thank you so much. Alafu anayeka uko. Alafu anakutolea githeri tuye nyali kwa mpika. <laughs> but at least you carry somebody. So we were talking with my friend and just saying, um, something is lost. It was lost in the transitioning. So where you were comfortable to go and You see, with our parents, it's just, it's just something. Just, it could be anything. Mbebetu ndizimbili. Bora tu ujaingia hivyo. Mbebetu, just, just something. 
mbebe tu like, packet moja ya maziwa unajua lakini sasa kwetu mzee anakuletea packet moja ya maziwa karibu muulize hizo zingine ziko like jua unajua mtu akikuletea shopping akuletea shopping akuletea maziwa sasa maziwa nitapika nayo aje chai ka unataka unilete maziwa unilete skari unilete majani na kenye nitakula nayo mkate unaniletea aje nitafanya nini nayo Mazi, maziwa tu is that our generation and it was so interesting as we were having that conversation and i thought to myself it might be because we have lost the art of working with our own hands I remember when I was looking for work before I came into ministry just after I graduated one of the shocks of my graduation from campus was that the next day after my graduation graduated on the 19th of December just as companies were closing down for Christmas I was so shocked that on the 20th of December there were no people lined out my house recruiters and HR admins with letters of offer for employment that was a shock of my life anybody else has a similar testimony yes we're just like you thought as you're finishing school you'll be met with people like everybody just fighting nataka huyo nataka huyo nipatieni huyo nipatieni huyo ndio nataka you realize hey bro uko na first class hata hakuna mtu oh sina first class but uko na first class lakini hata hata hakuna mtu hakuna mtu anakutaka so i remember applying for work and applying for work and i got a few places to work a few were outside nairobi um at that time i didn't want to go outside nairobi for a few reasons those were valid reasons yeah but then i got a few offers inside nairobi and those offers were paying measly cents few shillings sent to sent kidogo sana you see tukiwa kampo mnachochana eh unajua senyo kwa field yetu hii field yetu inakuwa marketable unajua ukitoka hivyo unachaka starting salary inakuwa nga Let's do a quick a quick survey. This is the youth service. If you're here and where you're working, the field you're working is not what you went to school to do. Please lift your hand. Lift your hand and keep it up and look around, look around. You you see your your fellow people, my hand is also up by the way. <laughs> you you see those people? Yeah. Bonus for your signature entertainment. <laughs> oh, kuna watu my engineer, kuna ma actors, ma thespian kuna watu wa IT huyu mwingine anafanyanga ni ona wengine wa IT <laughs> at least nawajua wote lakini ukiwa pale kwa asubuhi like kwa harusi <laughs> so anyway this is the story i'm finishing with so i'm i'm applying i'm applying they are offering me jobs i mean somebody is inviting me to come and work that's like starting like first of all we're going to start your office as in, with an internship i'm just like internship um it's a paid internship i'm like oh great okay yeah we're going to give you 15,000 15,000 as a loose change 15,000 unaanza kufanya hesabu 15,000 ni naka uko roiru office iko south east ni kunje hivi ndudhi kwa sababu siezi nikatembea asubuhi ndudhi alafu ni pande alafu ni fike town alafu ni pande matatu ingine ya kwenda south east nishukie bellevue alafu ni awe 15,000 hata imeisha wiki ya kwanza na sijakula lunch Hi. Unasikia kuandikia unaambia no, I'm sorry I reject your offer. And I waited and I waited and I waited for a couple of months before I started doing anything before I even started um um before I went into uh internship. One day I was having a conversation with my sister and um I was talking about my frustrations about work and she was telling me but you've been telling me you've been getting a few places I'm like eh hey, lakini wanalipa vibaya. See, I was thinking I'm um, at least ni pata ile pesa yenyewe hata dadangu anapata hata nusu bana ni Of course she's older than me by a few years. So she left school a few years she's been practicing her work a few years before me. So I'm just there like mbona wani at least they're not valuing me and I'm going to say no I know my value. And then zile zingine wananiita ni zile kazi niko like at what are my rules? Ati I'm going to be eh that's like that's like office work please miss miss taki siku anataka kazi ya kwa secretary nataka job yenye niko na secretary nimemaliza for for fear ninapata secretary kwa nini we ni nani and my sister asked me then you want them to pay you for that what are they paying for what are they getting no what are they getting in return hii ni biashara wako biashara what are they getting what are you bringing untested knowledge zile notes ulisoma hizo ndio unaleta si exam ni untested knowledge uko nayo 
a lot of us here might get some advice that I got from what my sister was sharing. As you're thinking about guarding the anointing and working with your own hands, you might, it might help you to remember that success is a process. You start from someone. Make it a habit to sit with the older people, to sit with our parents. Ask them, when did you start? Where did you start? Hear the stories. Hear the stories. I've had stories about, for example, Mama Susan in the house, talking about how she used to pull a cat. Wasukuma cat ni don mkokoteni wakianza biashara pale na her husband babe oh I said I want to get married somebody who's going to give me their life the real housewives of Nairobi okay <laughs> but when you catch the art of working with your hands there's something that happens when I have come and bought these microphone covers and I have had they are needed, and I come and I supply them, and they pay them, the difference that I have gotten is just five shillings for each. So the money I have after I have removed everything, the profit I made was 250 bob. But it is my 250 bob. And then I 10% it, and then I give the 25 shillings. And you see, when I have worked with my hands, I'm not thinking, Sai kwa jagani kutoa taith, Basha yenye naeka, hiyo tithe ni expensive kuliko hiyo tithe yenye naeka. You see, those are ways for us convincing ourselves to not tithe. Wacha ni ngoja ifike mo, but he who can be trusted with a little beloved can be trusted. I know the YPNs have been having the conversation about tithing, and we're going to keep talking about it. I love the, the, the conversation. But a big argument was that one for, should I tithe from the gross or from the net? And I thought, what do you want God to bless, the gross or the net? Pastor Millicent said something to us in Thika on Friday, and she said that if I have given my life to God that he can use me, then my money will not be difficult to give either. Kama nimesha jitoa mimi mwenyewe, wale tapa nyuma itakuwa ngumu, si wale tikona mimi. Mimi mwenyewe ni kondani ya kibiyo, kikapu ya sadaka. So ni nini ingine mungu wana zaitisha ni katae. We're going to be talking about that. Maybe it will be a different series on giving. But... Working with your own hands, there's a joy that you think, that you receive. This is how it guards the anointing finally, he says. Why should you do that, he says, that you may walk properly to those who are, towards those who are outside and that you may lack nothing. See, as you're working with your hands, beloved, you are walking properly towards those who are outside. Other people are looking at you and your life and they are desiring the victorious God of your salvation. As you're, as, you're, as you're working with your hands, you are guarding the anointing because you're not a bother to other people. I'm not saying that you will not fall into difficult times, that you should be ashamed of going to tell your neighbor, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if you just sit back and expect millions to fall to you, that's how you fall prey to those things that we were talking about, about betting and about copying money that you know you will never return, and about dwelling and living on Mshwari and Fuliza. That's not your money. When you aspire to work with your own hands, you're thinking, ile pesa wana nipatia ineza kwa capital. Ni takanda unga, ni piketcha party, ni uzia watu. You see those people who just zurura, there's a time when I was, I was working just down here at a cyber cafe uh, in 2011. I'm doing my long holiday, my first long holiday was it. I was working just down, just down the road at Cooperative. Um, I was working at a cyber there, and uh, there's, there's this young man that used to bring us chai. Unajua ile kahawa inaletangwa na tian. Naya natuletea kahawa na chapo zilikuwa hapo. Chapo zilikuwa konda, konda, kurasa. Chapo konda hivi ukiangalivi unona mwenyewe uko nini. Very thin chapos, but they were nice. They were yummy chapos. And that young man alikuwa na jituma. Alikuwa na piga maraundi. Alikuwa na anzi hapa cooperative. Ana piga yo barabara yote adikule chini pasta. Ana maliza. Ana rudi ana pika zingine. Ana panda tena na yo juu watu wa mesikia njani jioni. Alafu wa melalisha yake pesa. Working with your own hands. When COVID hit, um, one of my friends was working at a school. And then the schools were shut down. What he decided to do was to hire a... Um, a cut, a, is it a ile ya kuskuma? Akanza kumix mokis, alikuwa tu wameka mahali just up here, just not so far from, from cooperative. You see, this was a teacher. Mwarim. Respectable in the society. 
Angeamo na young person is a young man who is not married. Angeamo eh Mrs Nikaga. Madam wapita hapo akiniona niki niki small. Eh kipiga watu mayai. Ule mstari mwenye atafuta na kuja kwambia. Aya kwani ni wewe? Nipigie moja. You're not thinking about those things beloved. Na ah ah ah. When that when you are aspiring to work with your own hands, you know there is no shame in clean work. The Lord adds his blessing to the labor of our hands. How will gopi? Will gopi kuambia wa say mimi na kuanga house help. Mimi ni house manager. Lakini na wewe uko una kuanga house manager. Unafanyanga hata hawezi wakakuachilia. Wewe ni house manager unawaambia nataka kutoka. Nataka kwenda nianze kitu kingine. Anasema hapana. Kule unaenda kwani unaenda kutengeneza how much? Tuna double. Have you heard of those stories because I have. I know of house managers that left where they left to go and start their own good thing. People who are faithful stewards. Pastor Beatrice was sharing with me about one of her house managers the other day. She was looking very gorgeous in, you know, a nice cloth and she was telling me I told her she's smart and I be in ile nonio na house manager wangu wa kitambo. You know Pastor Beatrice knows how to bring the dress, you know. Asema hii ile nonolio na mai nini? I'm like, "Wow, akasema huyo msichana sitawai msahau." Uyo msichana alifanya kazi. You know you're imagining this is your boss giving that testimony of you. But a lot of us just want to sit in offices that have black seats just swinging. <laughs> just like when say oh I want to get water you're swinging to the water dispenser. That's the life we want. Why? Because that's what the people have sold us on social media. You see you start by living a quiet life. If you're not living by the standards of the distraction of the world, then you can aspire to mind your business. When you mind your business you realize shida yenye inanikimbiza si yenye inakimbiza hawa si wengine. So I will work with my own hands. Unajituma kwa biashara yako. When God has placed his blessing on it, there is nothing just like he said about the people at Babel. There is nothing that these people will set out to do that will not prosper. May the Lord help you. May the Lord help me. That is how we guard the anointing. So that we live lives that bring glory to God, that put the enemy to flight. That when people look at us, they look at the way we are living. They are like, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I want that God. I want that God. When we are saying we want to do something, even ata unakuja unachipin. Tunajenga cathedral, unakuja unaleta 50 bobe yako. Usiangalia ati mina leta 5K, kwa sababu kuna mwingine mbele yangu analeta 50K. Lakini biyashara yake si biyashara yangu, na hii 550 bobe yangu ni legit. Ni mei sweat here. Ndio sisi kwa wale mayuth wenye watu wanatuambia bana tina kutolea nimekupatia 500 nasema 500 ninataka 1.2 million ya kwenda shule unanipatia 500 sema eh juka uliko unataka 1.2 million sasa unahitaji 1. Point something that is less than 500 bro kama nimekupatia thao bro una look down on thao yangu labda mshahara yangu ni 30k inamaanisha kuna siku niliamka nikaenda nikafanya kazi siku mzima juu yako wewe wacha mchezo niko na <laughs> Our Father and our God, in Jesus' name, we are so grateful. We have had your word today. You've spoken to us in clarity. We pray that, Lord, you would help us. One thing we know after listening to these things right from the beginning is that we cannot do it alone. We cannot keep our hand in yours alone. We cannot allow you to lead us alone. We cannot lead quiet lives or mind our business or work with our own hands alone. We need help. We need your help. So send down your Holy Spirit and let him help us. This is our prayer of faith in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.